My name is uh, Jim Stevens. I'm the VP of Sales and Marketing for, for US Digital. Um, myself and, and Josh, Josh Barton were traveling to Japan and China. We started our trip in Shanghai and ended up in Japan on Wednesday evening. Uh, we had just, just departed uh, the bullet train from, from Hamamatsu. And we're just starting to check into the motel uh, when, when uh, the earthquake hit. And, um, and uh, the motel, it's, it's, it's a large motel. Uh, there's about 1,700 rooms in this motel, and there's about 40 stories of, of building above us. And it started out gradually, and it built. And um, at, it, it, it moved, and it moved, you know, maybe five to 10 feet, it felt like. The lady that was helping us at, at, the, at the motel check-in, her eyes got large, and she says, this is a big one. And, and Josh and I were hanging on the counter, and the, and the floor in the motel was actually moving. It's, it's hard to determine how far it was moving, but it felt as if it was moving, you know, several feet in, 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 a, in a circular motion of some type. And, and it, it was it was like you're surfing. But at, you know, at that point, you know, Josh and I were looking at each other and said, "What do we do?" We said, "Well, let's get out of here." So Josh and I were hightailing for the, for the door. We're getting out of this building. So on the way out, of course, uh, we ran to a manager. Says the manager, says, "Stop! Whoa! Everybody's trying to stop everybody. Saying, well, you're safe in here because this motel is is earthquake proof. You know, even if we went outside, we'd be, you know, if the buildings were to come down, it, it's like we'd be dodging debris. And that feeling of not knowing where to go and really not having a good option was a little bit scary. And, and, the, and the earthquake this whole time is going on. It, it's it, things are still moving. People ask, well, how do you describe it? I, I can't describe it. I mean, my words would not be sufficient to describe it. Um, you can see the pictures, the videos, but there's no word to describe the intensity. Um, once the quake stopped, and it seemed like it went for five to 10 minutes, um, we finished our check-in. It was kind of surreal uh, to go through that process and finish it up. And we decided, well, um, it's over, let's get a bite to eat. We found a, a, a restaurant in the hotel all the help in the restaurant were, were kind of gathered around talking. They weren't really too interested in, in, in helping people. They were, they were pretty disturbed, obviously disturbed. And then another earthquake hit about, I think they said it was roughly in the seven magnitude. So, so we're sitting there and, and the, this building starts moving again. And you look out, we look out the window and you can see the, the, the shrubbery moving like this, it was, it was shaking. And eventually they just, they, they asked everybody to get out of the building. When they're making these announcements over bullhorns, and you have no idea what's going on. And you're just kind of looking around, seeing, okay, are, it, should I run? You know, there's tsunami warnings, and you're waiting outside, and it starts to rain. There's people with blankets. It's just crazy. And what you, you realize is you're all in it together. The thought was, is this like the end of the world? I mean, that is what people were saying. It's shaking every 20 to 30 minutes, you know, four to 5.0 earthquakes. So it doesn't stop. The hotel is continuously swaying. All transportation is shut off. So in this, in this train station, of course, there's, there's thousands of people in this train station who are commuting either into town or out of town, you know, going home one way or another. So those people were, were totally stranded at that point. And these people are also milling around looking for a place to, to hang out, which, which turned out to be like in our motel lobby. And they were watching the TV downstairs in the lobby, um, watching these tsunamis destroy their country. And it's hard to put yourself in their position. You, you can't imagine it. If it was your family in that area, what, you, what would you be thinking? What I was really impressed with in, in Japan is the people uh, really showed a lot of respect for one another. There wasn't uh, uh, people pushing their way around or, or uh, uh, any looting or stealing. I mean, they could have. I mean, everything was evacuated. But people really respected each other, um, respected each other's space, and uh, I was impressed by that. We went up to our rooms after we ate, and I'll tell you, uh, all night long, the hotel was swaying and creaking and cracking. And so Jim and I decided to really discuss a plan of action. So, so we, had, uh, we had seats on this uh, uh, Delta flight leaving at 3.40. And all the roads going towards the airport, all the um, highways going to the airport had been closed. So he's on service streets trying to find ways there, uh, running into roadblocks. And so we spent about two to two and a half hours in a taxi going maybe five miles. He, he, he took us to a, to a train station that happened to have a train running. 
Uh, they, they apparently had opened up one line and or were moving people around. So that allowed us to get on, on a train that would take us to, to another station, which would have another train that would take us to, to the airport. It was so tight with people. Uh, you come to, to, a, to a train station, there'd be people waiting to get in, they open the doors, they'd start pushing their way in. We, we made it to, to the, 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 the switchover point in the station and made it to the airport. The train doors opened up, Josh and I, we just take off, we just start running. We're, we are running as fast as we can with our luggage and stuff. We get into the concourse, we're down to just a few minutes before the flight, flight leaves, and we take off and we're running again, we're running full tilt towards, towards the gate. We, we, we give them our, our, our tickets, they get us in the plane, we go in down the concourse into the plane, get into the plane, get into our seats, and the door closes, and that was it. We were, we were that close. If in five more minutes, we wouldn't have made that flight. If we didn't make that flight, we'd probably be there for an extra couple of days because there were, there were no more flights leaving Narita going to, to the States. You know, when that plane hit the air, people just started to cheer and erupt. It actually started, I actually looked around and got a little scared because you never, I mean, you hear this and you're kind of like, what is going on? What's wrong with the airplane? Not now. <laughs> we just got out of this. And, uh, and, and they said, hey, uh, uh, Jim said, hey, they're cheering. And, and then I started to cheer. And, and then to get home and see my family was just incredible. Um, I know Jim was pretty excited to see his family, and, and uh, it's nice to be home. Uh, I, I, I love being home.